This is Startup Storefront. If you've been a longtime listener to the podcast, you might recognize Brisha Lopez from episode seven. At that point, she had just received the James Beard American Classics Award for the best Oaxacan food in the country. Since then, she grabbed a hold of a rocket ship and her career hasn't stopped ascending. Here are some of the highlights. Her drink mix, I Love Micheladas, officially launched in Costco. She started Super Mamas, a chart-topping podcast with her sister, Paulina. And now you can officially bring the taste of Oaxaca to your home with Bricia Lopez's new cookbook, Asada, The Art of Mexican Style Grilling. These delicious recipes were born out of love, heritage, and passion. It's one of the first ever grilling books dedicated to the art of Mexican grilling, and it perfectly captures the beauty of Asada culture in LA. In today's episode, we chat with Brisha Lopez about why she insisted her cookbook photos be shot outside of a studio, why we should normalize Latino kids growing up with privilege, and why people don't write cookbooks to make money. All right, welcome to the podcast. We are Hi. back with Bricia Lopez. Welcome back to the pod. Thank you. I know I'm back. You're, You're back. You're so legit now. You're the second person, or maybe the first person to come back. But um, we've had your brother on, Let's obviously, go. from I Love Micheladas. Yes. And now you're back. What are you working I'm on? Back. What's going on? The book. I am, before anything, I have to just plug my book. Before plug we the get book. into anything, we have to get into Asada the book. is out everywhere where books are sold. It's my second cookbook, and I'm very proud and very excited about it. Tell us about the book. What was the inspiration for the second so the first book is Oaxaca, right? So the first book was all about my family's story, about Oaxaca, the essence of, you know, really the heart of Mexican cooking, just the traditional recipes that I grew up eating. I moved to LA when I was 10 years old. So to me, asada is just my life after 10. It's like all that, all those foods, the Mexican Latino weekend journey that we go through having an asada at home inviting your friends over or if you don't have a home that has a backyard going to the local park that you, that you see still that you still see it you wow. know like to yeah. today yeah you see those parks um and then just the smoke of the grills and the smell walking through and all the families coming together and music in the background and kids running around and at the center of it is this beautiful asada just spread those are the recipes. And I always say a lot of people, when they make an asada, they'll just go to a carniceria, whether it be a Northgate, a Vallarta, right? And they have their favorite one. Yeah. And they walk in there and they buy everything pre-made. And God knows it's delicious. I've done it before. They buy their salsas, their carnes, their nopalitos, their rice, their beans, their tortillas. This is basically all those recipes coming together that I think if anyone makes any of these recipes... 100 percent people are gonna think like they were store-bought the coolest thing and this is something that we've been talking about a lot recently but it's like the coolest thing about food is when you have it and it just transports you to this moment i think it's actually why people fall in love with food but i think it's also one of the hardest things for a chef to figure out again it's like what spices can you do what's the thing that's going to bring you back to maybe being a 10 year old in la again yeah and that's like there's a magic in that Mm -hmm. and it's like a, a gift you you have it not many people do it's like the craziest thing it's a gift it, and a curse diego why why is it a curse? a curse what's the curse portion i think like people that are in food it's it's the hardest industry to be in i mean it no music acting arts it's it's part of the arts you know if you're in the arts it's it's very difficult because you just put so much of you creativity time hoping to get some sort of return i mean this book is Anyone that writes a cookbook, my respect, my admiration, because it's not something that you do to make money, right? It's just something that you do for fun. And then it's something that you do to fulfill something inside of you that's just, it has to be out. Like this book has been in me for years, which it was actually inspired of a restaurant that never happened between us two. Yes. Um, yes. And I had that place in my in my heart just burning. And I knew I didn't want to open a new restaurant, but that like that was inside me. And it just manifested itself in a book. Let's talk about that. So we were going to open up this really cool thing. Yeah. And it, it felt like, but at the same time, it was like, it wasn't, it didn't feel perfect. Didn't feel that mm -hmm. right. And then on top of that, I think we dodged a huge bullet with COVID. A hundred percent. I mean, I think like once COVID came, I was like, wow, I, I, my instinct was right on that one. At that one, it was all, I followed my heart. Right. And it was, I think one of the first times in a, like a deal of that, that, that I, just followed my intuition that turned out to be right. Yeah. Um, and again, it's not a restaurant, but it's a wonderful, beautiful book that I'm very, very proud of. And 
there's timing for everything I've learned. So give us a sense of like what, what goes into this book. So the first time you did it with Javier, mm -hmm. the Glutster, for people who don't know. Editor-in-chief of LA Taco. What do people not know about what's what's behind like a cookbook? Like what is involved other than, first of all, it's beautiful. So if people that are in content, it's like a content masterpiece. Thank you. But what is involved from the side of it that like, is it recipe creation? Yeah. Sourcing? Yeah. And then how long does the whole thing actually take? So everyone's book deals are completely different. Everyone's way of working is completely different. Javi and I, you know, this is her second book together. So we're pretty well versed in our relationship. And it was my second time around doing a book. So I knew what it, what it went into. Obviously, when you're in it, you're like, why did I do this again to myself? But then you love it. So here's the way it works. So, you know, in, like in any book deal, you get an advance. Um, the difference between writing just a book on business, like the one you have here from yeah, a Matt couple Higgins, weeks ago. Yeah, Burn the Boats. Your Burn the Boats. Great book. Right. And I haven't read it yet, but I was listening to your interview it's and I'm like, boy, I feel like now David I have to. Changs. But now I have to read it in a night, like like yeah. in overnight, like you did, because there's a lot of pressure. Yeah, the, you're welcome. Your, your speed reading yeah. capabilities. <laughs> um, for him, I don't know if he wrote it or he had a ghostwriter, right? But that's all it really goes to. That's all he does. Yeah. He sits, he writes, it's done maybe decides on the cover, maybe he doesn't, done. Yeah. A cookbook, you get your advance. Out of that advance, for me, a percentage goes to the agent, then my writer, partner, Javi, and I'll explain that relationship in a bit. But then out of, you deduct that from the advance, and then you have to find a photographer that you love. I'm very blessed to know Quentin Bacon, who is the photographer, my, who was the photographer of my first book, who I automatically knew I wanted to do my second book with and who I probably will work for future books if I do if I do more. Because he is a one-man show who shows up and is really all about natural lighting. So if you look at the book, throughout the book, it's all real. I always, when I first saw his work, the best way to describe him, I would say he he's like a legend in the game, in the food game, the cookbook game. Very blessed to be able to work with him. But he is a very much natural light realness he doesn't do you know he doesn't play with studio lights he doesn't have those harsh kind of sure 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 you know that you would find in a bon appetit or a food and wine which i love yeah which i love yeah. it's just not who i am i wanted to just be a moment in time captured in realness so that's what he does so you have to pay him then for the shoots though you also have food styling you have prop styling my recipe tester was my food stylist, so that was kind of like a two-in-one situation. But you have to find budget for a prop stylist. And any, anyone who's, who is looking to writing a cookbook or working in a cookbook, I highly... There's a lot of cool props, too. Yeah, We've I... We've learned. Uh, the team here, they have, like, the fake ice cubes. And like, that's the food styling. No, for sure, but it's crazy. Like, the amount of things that go into these, these like, shoots, Yeah, I think would at least for me, like blow my mind. Yeah. Personally. But that's food styling. I, I didn't have any fake guys. All okay. I have is all I have in my book is, is realized because these were captured in real moments. They weren't like set yeah. that we had like three days of shooting recipes for the sake of doing it. But most of the book was shot like in real life. But the prop stylist, again, going back to if anyone's interested in doing a cookbook or working on a cookbook, a hundred percent always have a prop stylist. I think I didn't have one for my first book and I wish I did going back. I mean, I'm very proud of the first one. Actually, I wouldn't change anything. But this one, I would definitely prop stylist over food stylist any day. But that's also because I have, I already also have experience in styling and I have experience in cooking yeah. and have someone there. And I have a team of chefs that always help me prep stuff. So because of that, I didn't think I needed a food stylist. Yeah my recipe tester who was my styling assistant ends up then becoming a food stylist now so now he's a food stylist because he loved working in the process so much that makes Jesse sense Jesse Ramirez uh, shout out to him he's great all right let's jump into one okay. of the recipes you have here and so what are, what are you showing us this beautiful oh, photo okay. from your so, backyard yes I was just grazing through the pages one of the first recipes that I made for carne asada was a michelada marinade I'm going to take it to my, I'm going to tie Let's in my brand really like easily it. right here. Please do. But it was about, I don't know, six years ago. I had a carne asada at my house for 4th of July. I always host my family. It's like the thing. I love 4th of July. Thanks for the asada. invite. It's so nice. You're welcome. We'll get there. Um, <laughs> it's a, you know, let us, you know, we got to. Let it marry. Te text me a little bit more <laughs> okay. often. Okay. Send me a few memes before, you <laughs> okay. know, coming okay. to my house. Yeah. So I was trying to figure out, I was 
I was actually doing content for my Michelada brand, and I was like, I want, I'm sure this would be great to marinate. I love Micheladas. Yes, to, right here to marinate meat with. So then I made this recipe. I developed this recipe, and it was one of the most loved dishes of the day. I, that was like the first meat to finish that day. So. So you marinate the meat. Yes, with different spices, and then we add a lot of our Michelada mix. We and how long you let that sit for? Just, just I might, so I might have to try this. So for marinade, this. I think you need at the very least two hours. Okay. You can do it overnight. Okay. But I think two hours is more than enough. And here's the thing: people probably just think, oh, it's just so much work. It, it really is just putting a few items together, a few ingredients together, either in a blender or in a plastic bag, putting your meat. And closing just it, yeah. Closing it, put it in the fridge. Yeah, it's actually pretty easy. It's just you just have to do it. Do it ahead of time. I, I guess that's the hard uh, part. The hard part uh, is like, oh, I'm gonna eat in two hours. Though? No, because if you're coming people over, right? Right. For you Saturday, do it yeah. in the morning, and then you know, or you wanna, hey, let's do kind of salad like later today. Great, let's just marinate it and then take it out in two hours. It's not. It's not you do it at much. twelve, you eat at two. Do it at ten, you you eat at twelve. Like it's fine. And I think one of the most important things is always grilling your meat room temp. So even if even say, even do this, like marinate your meat cold and just let it let marinate. It sit. Let it sit in your house for two hours and then okay. just put it directly on the grill. Like it's not gonna do. What's the most time someone could do? And so two hours is the minimum. Is there an is oh. overnight? Is... Oh, you can do overnight. It would be great. I mean, okay. as long as the meat is good, you can just leave it there for okay. four days and it'll be incredible. I'm try this. So yeah. what else do you add? So besides your michelada mix, what do you add? So um, here, look, we have, I'm going to read it from the book. Garlic, powder, cumin, sea salt, beer, tomato juice, orange juice, shallot, or an onion. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. You've just launched... With Costco. Yes. I love all micheladas. LA stores. All LA. Yeah. Congratulations. And Hawaii. And Hawaii. Yeah. Congrats on doing Thank that. Thank you. Thank How's you. it going? It's going well. It's going really well. I mean, it's getting warm here in LA now, so it really helps when it the heat when the sun comes out for us. But we're hoping that we right now we're what Costco calls like a seasonal product. So Costco is constantly rotating products, right? I mean, there's certain legacy brands that stay forever. You know, you're always going to find, you know, Doritos <laughs> year round. So we are more of a summer, late spring, all summer, late summer, early fall window where we are on shelves. You know, in the beer aisle, you can find us. Got it. And the chamoy, that's a new, that's, that's a new a thing new you guys one. just try started it. with? I want you to try it. Right now? Yeah. Okay. Come on, open it up. I want to see you interact with oh it. Oh my God. If I don't like it, what am I going to do? You're going to love it. It's, I'm not, I'm not really worried. <laughs> this is a new product that we have. It's been in development, believe it or not, for like two years. We wanted to find the perfect packaging for it that you're having a hard time. Oh, there it it's is. It's beautiful, by the way. It's really um, cool. Yeah. So, All right, what do I do with it? I just put it on this cup. I just want to see how you interact with it. It's I love. Should I just seeing, do it like this, like a like a lollipop? Do how? Do you just do you? You do you, Diego. Dude, I don't know. I'm just. I'll just do it like this. Sure. Oh, that's good. I wasn't worried. Here's the thing about like the Lopez's siblings. Anything we do is gonna be legit. This is why it takes us so that's long. That's really to, good. To, yeah, I know. <laughs> like this is making me. You, do you put this on me? You can put this on me. You can put this on anything. You can put this on anything. You can put it in your ring, you can put it in your fruit, you can put it on anything. What's in this? This is delicious. It's like a chili, like a chili paste, chili. Yeah. How, how did, would you describe it? Chamoy is a, it's a paste made out of citrus, spice, chiles that just, it, and it's very, and it's salty. So most chamoys that you find in stores, they are highly sweet. It's almost like a candied chamoy oh true i've had yeah yeah okay yeah the that people, i've seen yes yeah, people put the on candy. the rims and it like heartens it's it has so much sugar that when you put it on your rim it heartens and i don't get me wrong i like it it has a purpose i just can't have a lot of it the way our taste buds work is that the flavor that you're having right now the reason why you love it so much because it's really activating your glands so the saltiness and the citrusy part of your taste buds of your glands, those are being activated. So like that makes you want to have more and drink more and just keep going. If it would be too sweet, you could only just have, you will have just a little bit before it just got too much. This one, you can just keep going because of the salt. Okay. One of the hardest things that we had to do for this podcast is something so simple 
it's to get chairs. We had been using these plastic chairs and they just weren't cutting it. And not only were they ugly, but they were also massively uncomfortable. So when we had the founders of Sundays on the podcast, it only made sense for us to get new podcast chairs. So they shipped us a set of count on me dining chairs. So if you're interested in upgrading your chairs too, whether that be in your house, office, podcast studio, or anywhere in between, check out the link in the description to pick some up yourself. We can't recommend Sunday's chairs enough. And for people listening, we're going to give one of these away. Yes. The book away mm-hmm. and the I Love Micheladas. Yes. Which yes. is great. We have so stay our tuned mix. for that giveaway. This is new pro- this is, these are the two new products that we have. We have our pre-rimmed cups. And for those listening... Who, oh, these are pre-rimmed right here. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. For those of you who don't know what Micheladas are, are they're not bloody marys yeah how do you explain it to people we did this before but how do you or i did this with your brother actually yes my brother my brother so a lot of people a lot of people think micheladas are just a bloody mary and i think that if you are out there if you're a bartender if you are someone who is in the in the front lines of you know the food and beverage food and beverage please do not use a bloody mary mix to make a michelada you are doing us all a disservice you are pulling people away from enjoying the true flavor of michelada just don't do it just say you don't have it don't <laughs> okay don't put a bloody mary mix and for those who are interested in in creating a new michelada mix brand please go and find a co-packer that can make an actual legit michelada do not please don't put a bloody mary mix in a bottle and call it a michelada because that's i just that's doing a do disservice people do that? yes all the time oh wow i just think that that's just does such a disservice to mm. the mexican culture and yeah. to just like it just pushes people the way there's so many people that are like i don't like it it's just too tomato me or i'm not about it and that's not what a michelada should be a michelada should amplify your beer it should make it better it should make you want to have more it should never be a a meal in a cup you know Yes. So that's that's really we make our own. We have our own our production line. We have our warehouse. We have our own team. We make everything. We have we make it. We make everything in house, package it, and make sure that everyone just has like a legit Michelada experience. With Costco, so since you're a seasonal product today, will that change if it does well, or how do they, or they they just put you in that category? You know, it just changes with time. Okay. Um, even if it does very well, we we do very very well in Costco. Thankfully, if you don't do well in Costco, Costco is just such an incredible company to work with. Partners, they're the best partners. They'll tell you. They'll know. Like Costco will know if it were a product is going to work, work okay. within the first three days of being in the floor. Oh, wow. Like, they'll know. Like, your shit's going to pop off or mm, it might not be okay. the best. And if it doesn't work, do they basically cancel the order or do they how do they uh, how do they work with no, you it's just capacity? it's just basically they're like it'll be a, a uh I, actually i don't know okay you don't have that problem i you know thankfully right now it's going, it's going well. very well yeah people love it um i think that it speaks a lot of the mexican culture where we are right now especially in la to have a michelada mix at a place like that that's not even just you know quote unquote a latino store right right like right. that's like if you in LA, we have the Northgate and the Vallartas. Sure. Right? We we have a brand there. But we're, there's also... That's where you go for it, right? Yeah. yeah. Now to have it at a place where it's a... It's just a store. It's just a store, yeah. Totally true. And then to have our our culture represented, I think, is really, really important. So what's next? Now that you have Costco, are you thinking about other stores? What's other next? Retailers? Well, you know, right now, I'm only in the Los Angeles region. Mm-hmm. So what's next? I, I love Costco, so I'm trying to just grow within the costco family mm-hmm. it's never ending work you know it never is that's the problem you just yeah. it, ne- it never you ends you just keep going everyone always says like what's next so where are you going i'm like if it was that easy that i could just snap my fingers and be on every shelf in america you don't think i would you know it just takes time relationships knocking people's doors still fighting the fight of like mm, i don't know if people are gonna you know really gravitate to a michelada still you know you're like how how are you still not putting like Mexican products like this on your shelves. You know, why are we still fighting on pricing? Why are we still fighting on whether it's going to move or not? You know, why are people still... Why is it such a mystery? Yeah, why are people still yeah. pushing back because it's just such a specific, you know, Latino product, you know. There's no data is the problem. It's too risky on paper, yeah. allegedly, right? Yeah, but, but I think I, also these are people who are making decisions, you know, in a, you know, inside a building. In, right, you in know, a vacuum. In in like not understanding the culture, not understanding, you know, the power of the community, understanding the way things, just the way it's shifting 
it's been shifting in America, right? I think Bad Bunny was like the first artist to bring the Latino culture forefront. People are like, oh shit, like this is really, where are these Latinos coming from all of a sudden? I mean, I think we're going to do the same thing with like Peso Pluma just kind of taking over the airwaves and the slow, I'm very excited to see his progression in the next few months and what it's going to do in the country. I think I see it in California and I see it sort of in my circle, but I think he's going to take over. Do you ever personally think about, so obviously like television has a huge way of changing the narrative mm -hmm. and educating the masses. Yeah. Do you ever think about really just moving more into media in a bigger way for you personally? Like TV? I love media. It, I love TV. I like doing, I mean, I have a podcast with my sister yeah. and we do very well. We have a great, incredible audience of moms throughout this country. We have such a super mamas. great network. Yeah, yeah. Super Mama is still, you know, top ranking in the charts. It's, we love it. We love doing the podcast. TV is one of these things too that, you know, we just keep, it's, it's, it's interesting being just you know, you're in LA, so you think, you know, you're so in front of the entertainment industry, right? Mm -hmm. And every, if I show you an inbox, it's like an inbox full of people saying like, we'd like to develop a show together. Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. And it's very LA mm -hmm. world. But you'd be surprised that when it comes to decisions, they're still looking, f when it comes to food, they're still looking for like, people are still in search for the Bourdain. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it works if it's a male white male i see you know and, and if you look at actual tv food tv i mean i think aside from padma is there any other That's interesting yeah woman who is in, in i guess Kristen kish just got a nat geo show okay but that's yeah. it i think yeah i think you're right yeah it's mostly it's still very much you know let's put a male voice first because we know that like you said like the risk right so many not many people have been open to taking risks. There have been so many times where we've been so close to closing a deal. I think three times in the past five years that it was right there, all done, all in paper, is just a matter of a signature. And then whether the network decided to not do more food, yeah. two, you know, someone, you know, cut funding or three, it just fizzled off. And also, like, the things I get offered aren't exciting. Sure. They're probably too safe. For me, I think, you know, recently I was just figuring out, like, my life values. You know, you go through these things. You're like, okay, what is going to push me? Like, how am I going to – how do you want to spend your life for the next, you know, 20 years? And to me, I just don't want to do things that aren't fun. Like, if it's not fun, I'm not going to do it. I decided that in my life. Yeah. For me, I, I, I try to do things. It's all about the story. So if it's a good story, like if I mm -hmm. look back on it or I, I can tell someone like, you'll never guess th how this happened. Like those are fun stories. And so oh. I just chase the story now. No, I just want to have fun doing it. That's yeah. kind of what I'm doing. I'm like, S kind of like, same, same. Yeah, yeah, I just want to have fun. That's like my number one thing. Yeah. And then, you know, family, it's a big part of like, that's like my second thing. The Lopez fam. Yeah. Here in LA. My family. Staple. Yeah. My family yeah. is very important. Make sure that everything is, my family is involved, that I get to spend time with them, that at the end of the day for me, it doesn't feel fulfilling if it's just me sitting at the top yeah. alone. I have to be with my family. That's all that matters. Because if it's not, yeah. it's not shared with your family, then like, what's the what's point? What's the point? Totally. I get that. That's a very Latino thing, I think, too, though. A very family-focused, family-centric uh, yeah, approach. Yeah, we're, we're very tight. We're just a very tight-knit family. And now with the cousins, you know, with my kids, my sister's kids. That's right. Everyone's having kids. Yeah, everyone's having kids. Now the it's beautiful just to see the cousins come together and for them to feel like they're siblings and for them to just have that partnership or just that same bond is, is beautiful to see. When you talk to, I'm just curious, I do this with my nephews. We're all taking them to like a building that we own. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, this is yours. And they're like, oh, what? Like we, when we bought this building, it was a pawn shop. And so uh -huh. they went in there and they're like, this is mine. I'm like, yeah, like whatever you want. And they found like toys. They found like little kid toys and they're, but it was like the cutest thing. Yeah. And then my nephew's like, how do you buy a building? I thought you could only buy home. And so it's just cool to see the yeah. discovery in them. But obviously for me, there's like an emotional part of it where I'm like, that's what, that's what, that's what's up. You yeah. know, it doesn't really matter. It's just like, it's cool that you can share it with them. Well, it's also cool to witness the fact that your generation is growing up with privilege and like what that's going to do for them. Mm. Right. Like 
Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, like I didn't grow up with privilege. Yeah, same. And my kids are. Yeah. And like that's amazing for them to have the power of culture, the power of all of that, and the power of privilege. Because there's a lot of power that comes with privilege that people really underestimate. I think the word privilege has a, has a really negative connotation. In today's woke society, yes, yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's like, oh, well, you're privileged. And it's like, well, normalize Latinos being privileged. Like, right. why is that bad? Right. Like, why is it bad that my kids are growing up in privilege? Why? Why yeah, no, do I not. have to like That's maintain cool. them? Like, yeah, normalize Latinos make money. Like, normalize Latinos making wealth. Like, that is the only way we're gonna get out of this. So, for them to then be able to grow up with privilege, with all those, with all that power of culture together, like, I'm very excited to see what they're gonna do. And that's like something that I'm tapping into right now too, and being able to move in, like not only doing things that dub me as Latina, but like just doing things that are dope right. and being putting myself in situations and in rooms and in partnerships that are just great that I don't have to have that like Latina connotation to it. I like it. So when you come back on the podcast in two years, what will, what will we be talking about? So for your third time, I don't know. The Triple Crown. What are we talking about on the third time? Third time? Uh, I'm thinking I'm thinking a TV show. I mean, yes, a TV show. We'll have Maybe, a building together. Yes, building. Uh, I, I, I love, I think, I love the idea of real estate, of, of that. I think it's, I mean, you're in that game, right? Like, that's yeah. your bread and butter. So doing that. Definitely that's real estate, asada. massive. <laughs> I think I really want to be able to experience the selling of a company. I don't know if that's going to be in two years, though. I definitely, like C- yeah, okay, yeah, definitely, like, probably some definitely time. a TV show for sure. Probably something major. I do want to go through the process of selling a brand. That is one thing I want to do in my life. I don't know if it'll be in two years, maybe in five, but I maybe in four. That is why we want to just focus on I love Micheladas. I want to know what it's. I want to know what that's like, and I want to experience that in my life. I love that. Yeah, I love that. So you, when you come back, you'll be talking about the sale. Yeah, yeah, maybe we can talk about like we'll how it went down, sale, what, what I'm doing now with, you know, Costco my payday. led to this, led to that. Yeah, yeah. we were talking about like What's what I'm doing now. building now? Yeah, what I'm gonna, where I'm doing with my money, Yeah. right? Yeah, am I, like I Am I investing in real estate? Am I investing in Probably. people? Like what Probably. am I going to be investing in? And I think that's pretty cool. Young versions of you and the Lopez yeah, family. Probably. I would love, yeah, that's I think the end game of all of this is being able to just have more, more family Latina businesses just seeing what they can do with with funding and what women can do it's really amazing to see i I have so many girlfriends who have incredible businesses that it just it just blows my mind how like the tenacity of latinas it's a good network yeah for sure well let's get tell people where they can buy the book anywhere books are sold asada the art of mexican star grilling just anywhere make sure to buy in a small bookstore and you can what's be, a small bookstore barnes and noble what's anywhere a, <laughs> anything i mean i always will tell people buy a copy on amazon but also okay. buy a copy in a powell's or in a barnes and nobles uh, in la now serving indigo bookshop.org like there's so many different stores that you can buy online it's really important to also that uh, sales come from different avenues not just amazon for a publisher that's a good tip. Mm-hmm. And we're going to give one away. So Yes, give one away. Keep it here. For sure. Patricia, thank you for coming on oh, the podcast. You're welcome. We'll Thanks see you soon me. in two, three years when you Let's sell this company. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> if you made it this far, I bet you loved the episode. So you should join our YouTube channel membership for only $2.99 a month. This gets you access to one, the whole unabridged conversation. Two, you get the episodes on Monday, one day earlier. Three, you get two additional entries to our giveaways. Check out our Instagram to see what we've given away. And four, you get access to seasons one through three. That's over a hundred episodes of wisdom and life-changing advice. What are you waiting for? Join.